Don't write your introduction before you watch this video. If you're already writing the introduction, stop because you're probably doing it wrong and I'm going to tell you why. You have not given the introduction the paramount importance that it deserves because it is the most important part of your proposal. Two, you're probably not aware of the high rejection rate of proposals, many of which can be salvaged by tweaking the introduction. And number three, you do not have a framework for overcoming the common pitfalls that most of us face while writing our introduction. In this video, I want to help you rethink the traditional approach of writing the proposal that you may have encountered in the lectures or on the web. Now, in the traditional approach, we are told to give an overview of the topic. We are told to summarize the previous literature. We are told to give the research girl and to state the study aim. However, in today's information overload and with the supervisors who are now burdened with a lot of proposals to review and a lot of work and teaching they do not have the time to read all our proposals in entirety and are going to read the introduction and a few other sections of the proposal so it becomes very important for us to make sure that we avoid psychological rejection and this can be done by making our proposals stand out from all these other proposals that the reviewer has to read which are also using the classic approach of writing your introduction so i'm going to give you four simple steps that are going to help transform your introduction so that it can stand Stand out from all the other introductions that your supervisor is going to have to read and this will minimize the chances of your proposal being rejected step number one establish an emotional connection with your reader right away instead of giving an overview of the topic and giving definitions of the topic why don't you put statements that are going to appeal to the readers emotions and this is done by giving startling statistics this is done by giving anecdotes that are relevant and also giving thought-provoking thoughts and ideas in your first paragraph. Let's look at an example of how not to write the first paragraph. Now let's look at an example of how to write the first paragraph. Step number two. In order to continue engaging the reader, you need to anticipate the reader's questions and address them right off the bat. This means that instead of summarizing the literature, use that to answer the reader's questions and you will keep the reader engaged. Let's look at an example of how we can use previous literature to keep the reader engaged. Step number three, instead of just stating the research gap, you need to demonstrate it. And in order to demonstrate the research gap, one, you need to show the inconsistencies in the previous research or the contradictions. Number two, you need to show the patterns and the trends of the previous research so that you can identify a gap. Number three, you need to state or identify the limitations of the previous research and also identify any biases of the previous research. When you do those three things, you will be able to demonstrate a research gap. Now, let's look at how not to write the research gap. Now, let's look at how to write the research gap. Step number four, highlight the contribution of the study. Instead of simply stating the study aim, try to identify any novel results that are going to arise from your results and anticipate those in your aim of the study. Also show us how addressing the research gap is going to solve the research problem that your proposal is trying to address. Let's look at an example. So to bring it all together, we have looked at four steps to try and elevate our introduction so that they can stand out from the rest of the proposals that our reviewers and supervisors have to read. And number one, we've talked about creating an emotional connection with the reader. Number two, we've talked about anticipating and answering the reader's questions. Number three, we have talked about demonstrating instead of showing the research gap. And number four, we've talked about highlighting the 
contribution of the study instead of simply stating the study aim. Remember, if you want your proposal to stand out, you need to rethink the traditional formats of writing the introduction. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you.